everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Sorry I have not been posting over the last couple of days. Actually kind of overworked myself a little bit. I actually passed out on stream Wednesday. Thursday I worked my regular job as normal. It got rained on and I've been a little bit under the weather since then. You might be able to hear it in my voice just slightly, but for the most part I'm hanging in there. I'm trying to see if I can get this video in. Hopefully I can. But in any case, though, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, yeah, and again, apologies for that. But that being said, we still have weather to talk about, too. I don't know if I'll be streaming yet because, well, I'm still pretty sick. And I don't know if I can handle a long stream like previously. But we'll do the best that we can here. We do have relatively small slight risk areas over the course of the next three days. And then from beyond that point... We have predictability to low tags from days four through eight, which is good news for now. We do have to watch those areas to see if we get an uptrend on any of these storm systems as we continue to roll on beyond that point. So we'll start with today's slight risk, which is just now really starting to take off here. It's gonna be over towards the Fort Stockton area in Texas. Main threat today will be hail and damaging winds. There is a 2% tornado threat. I have to see whether or not that manifests or not. You get a mixed bag with those 2% areas. Sometimes it verifies as much higher. Sometimes it overperforms, And sometimes you get absolutely nothing. So if you're over towards Fort Stockton, even sneaking into parts of South Central and Southwestern parts of New Mexico, keep an eye on the weather tonight. Then we go to day two. We have a secondary area with a marginal risk all the way up into the Great Lakes region mainly going to be over towards Wisconsin, Green Bay, and also over towards Central Michigan. Main threat with this is going to be damaging winds and hail. Then, of course, our slight risk is between Arkansas, not Arkansas, but Texas and Louisiana here. Between Alexandria, Lufkin, and just to the east of Waco is where our greatest threat is concerned. It's going to be mainly damaging winds and hail. There is a pretty wide-spanning 2% 20 threat that stretches all the way back towards Central Texas. As I mentioned before, though, with the 2% threat, it's kind of a mixed bag. You don't know whether this will end up being a 2% or less a day or if this will overperform. So, again, make sure that you are staying weather aware in this area. And then as we go to day three, we have a much larger slight risk area. And we're going to talk about this more in depth in tomorrow's video, especially. Also, happy Mother's Day to anyone that may catch that video tomorrow or not, or this video even. But from New Orleans all the way to Corpus Christi and areas in between, even getting into southern parts of Arkansas here, we have a pretty large slight risk area and a hatch risk that's mainly comprised of the western half of the slight risk here. So areas like San Antonio, Houston, or Austin, excuse me, Waco, Lufkin, and Shreveport are in that slight risk. I think that this looks like a damaging wind setup as of right now, but I do think we could get a mixed bag with everything on the table here. But I do think hail still probably will be the main threat as it's been in most of our severe weather threats in recent time here. So a quick look at what we have going on right now with our wind pattern based off of the lunchtime models that have come in here. And this is pretty much what we have going on. This isn't a super conducive pattern to severe weather. This low pressure area here is going to be a point of interest though as we get further down the line. So we'll go ahead and throw this into loop here also with the euro here in the bottom left corner. And you can see that this does ramp up as we go through the evening and overnight here. And this is what kind of helps increase that severe weather threat as we get into tomorrow and then also getting into Monday here. Looks like this system kind of slows up just a little bit. Also tries to ramp up as we go through the day on Monday here. I do think this would be an early afternoon event that pops off here over towards Louisiana and Texas. <clears throat> then eventually we see this head off to the southeast. As we get into Tuesday, threat kind of drops off a little bit at the moment with that. This mainly ends up staying a positively tilted trough, so I don't expect a major severe weather event, but sometimes these can surprise you. So again, like I said before, make sure you're staying weather aware. And then after that, it just kind of seems like Texas becomes the focal point for severe storms over the course of the next couple of days. So we get into Wednesday and Thursday here. You can see evidence of a setup trying to take place over here towards central Texas. So we get into the evening hours <clears throat> then as we continue to go forward we see another one after that 
that comes in. So mainly, like I said, Southern Plains seems like the point of interest as we continue to go forward here. And then the pattern starts to pick up as we get towards the back half of the month here. Multiple storm systems coming into play once again. So we may get a little bit of a reprieve here, but we're going to be staying pretty busy still, it looks like, at the same time. Just maybe not as strong of a system as we've seen over the last few weeks here. But in any case, though, let's go ahead and take a look at our dew points while we're at it here. Main thing we're looking for here is a good source of moisture return coinciding with the temperatures that you'll see on the bottom left corner here. So if we go ahead and strike this forward a bit, you can see even as we're heading into Saturday night, you get a decent moisture return. It's not incredible over towards this region, but it's sufficient enough to get some storms going. The following day, the moisture return looks much better. We're starting to get into those mid 60s and upper seven and uh, lower 70s here actually. And as we continue to go forward, on Monday, that's when the moisture starts to get really rich, and this is when we would have a greater chance of more widespread severe weather as we go through Monday. <clears throat> then as we go beyond that point, there's nothing really uh, stopping the Gulf of Mexico from pumping that moisture into the southeast here, so we're going to continue to experience very muggy conditions throughout the entire eastern seaboard here as we go through the month entirely. As more of these storm systems come through, we still look like we get a lot of moisture to go around for everybody, whether you're in the central plains, the southern plains, southeast, midwest, does not matter, it looks like. We just have a continuous flow of Gulf of Mexico moisture coming in throughout the entire time frame. So this month still, like I said, has the signs of being active, just maybe not as many significant storm systems as what in comparison to what we've seen that have been surefire tornado outbreaks. We can still get them, but maybe they might not be as significant. Of course, we're looking pretty far out at range the further out we go, so we'll have to take that with a grain of salt. But in any case, though, let's go ahead and wrap this one up really quickly and talk about what our simulated radar looks like from the GFS here. So this is what we're looking like for tonight. Isolated thunderstorm activity for the most part. A couple storms could go severe. As we get later into the evening <clears throat> on Sunday and into Monday, see increased storm activity, especially towards the Red River region here. And then here's our second round right here just after sunset that we're interested in may include Dallas. After that point, we have that increased area starting to pop up around mid-afternoon on Monday. Then after that, that heads off to the southeast. We, we're done with this storm system, and then the next one's starting to come in. This storm system on Thurs on Wednesday, heading into Thursday, I'm pretty interested in. I'll see what that ends up doing. Maybe I'll go live for that, especially if I'm uh, feeling better. <coughs> then beyond that point, <coughs> we'll see what this ends up doing. It looks like this tries to go pretty linear, and towards the end, that's when we start to see... A little bit of a break in that storm system we get a few days of rest and then after that point this is when the pattern starts to pick back up a little bit increased storm systems over towards the central plains and then the southern plains starts to come back into play and this is towards the back half of the month here so still gonna be busy but we might get a few breaks here and there in between which is a little bit better than the constant what feels like almost an onslaught that we've had recently of severe storms well, in any case, though, appreciate you guys being here. We'll stay tuned. There's a few days in particular that I'm watching on here, of course, and I'll make more videos on those as needed. But again, appreciate you all being here. Thanks for all the support, and I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be tomorrow. Until then, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Take care. Have a good rest of your night.